Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So the inspiration for this topic was a video from Air Max where he talked about potential performance regressions with recent DX12 games when playing on Linux, especially when you have ray tracing enabled. Now to start off, I just want to mention that the main section of the video that I want to target is the AMD section. The claims made about the performance penalties with Nvidia cards, I can't verify any of those because I don't have an Nvidia card. I do on the other hand have an AMD card, so I feel pretty comfortable sharing my own personal perspective. Now as far as my experience, I haven't really noticed any performance loss with DX12 games. Of course, that would involve me frequently benchmarking every single game I bought running underneath this API, which is not something that I do. But in my limited experience and even observing some other benchmarks, I have not noticed a consistent performance loss. Some games run better on Windows, others run better on Linux. Many of them, barely any difference. So as far as raster performance, can't really lean towards one or the other. But when it comes to ray tracing, I can definitely say that Linux will almost always run slower than Windows. But the reason for why it runs slower is a bit of a different story. Because you see, Air Max believes that the source of the issue shouldn't really be with the drivers, but instead it's likely an issue with the Proton compatibility layer. Now, maybe that might be true with Nvidia cards, but when it comes to AMD, I'm fairly certain it's a driver problem. Now, for those of you in my audience who primarily use Windows, grab your popcorn, cause I'm about to explain you all the driver situation with AMD on Linux. Now, if you have a modern GPU, anything released within the past I'd say 7 years, the graphics driver that's gonna operate on your system is called AMD GPU. Now when it comes to gaming, you typically would need to install the Mesa package which comes bundled with graphics libraries that allow you to support programs that utilize OpenGL and Vulkan. Now the main AMD Vulkan driver that Mesa bundles with is called RedV, and generally speaking, Red V is awesome. It works really well. Comparable performance with Windows, in some cases even has better compatibility than the proprietary AMD drivers, specifically with some emulators as I've highlighted in the past. In fact, Valve uses Red V for their Steam Deck. However, this is a community built driver. This isn't necessarily the official open source driver for Vulkan made by AMD. That would go to AMD VLK which is what AMD officially supports for Linux. However, AMD VLK is not very good. I do appreciate its existence and I somewhat root for it to get better, but I would never recommend anyone use this over Red V. But there is one area where AMD VLK is better than Red V, and that is ray tracing. You see, the RT pipelines present in Red V isn't the same as the one present in AMD VLK or even the Windows drivers. The implementation varies quite a lot in a few ways, and when it was first merged into Mesa 23.2, we were told that we should be expecting significantly less performance compared to AMD VLK slash Windows drivers. In fact, I'm going to show you all a couple of benchmarks from Gravity Mark. Now I tested this with both the AMD VLK and Red V. Now with VLK, I got a score of 33,000 and an average FPS of 202. Seems fine enough, but here we have Red V getting a score of 35,000 and an average FPS of 213. So very clearly ahead of VLK if we're speaking purely raster performance. But once we get to ray tracing, it's a completely different story. Both obviously get lower scores, except VLK now surpasses Red V by having a score of 22,000, while Red V only scores 20,000. Which shows here that with the same graphics card, even though Red V has better overall raster performance than VLK, once we enable RT, it goes down. It's not even a matter of just having a smaller performance, it's genuinely worse. Now, in Air Max's video, he took notice of two things. The first was that during the Black Myth Wukong benchmark that he made, when you have ray tracing disabled, Linux actually has better performance than Windows by around 3% on average. But once you enable RTX, Linux gets a regression of about 50%. Now, here's where my results deviate quite a bit from his. Using my testing build, I can say with certainty that with ray tracing disabled, I do actually get similar results. My Linux install actually does get slightly higher frame rates. As you can see here from this screenshot at max settings, 
I'm scoring an average of 32 FPS on Linux compared to 28 FPS that I'm getting on Windows. Now, once I enable ray tracing, Windows is faster, but we're talking about a difference between 3 FPS and a 5 FPS average. These are not very helpful numbers at all, so I decided to tone down a couple of settings, and here's what I got. At 720p, 60% super resolution with the graphics preset set to cinematic, frame generation disabled of course. On Linux, I'm getting an average of 20 FPS, while on Windows, I'm getting 22 FPS. If I tone down the graphics preset to medium and reduce the super resolution to 44, I'm able to jump to 42 FPS on Windows, meanwhile on Linux, I'm only able to jump to 39 FPS with the same settings. So in general, I'm getting maybe less than a 10% decrease compared to Windows, but definitely not 50%. I even decided to test my primary build that has an RX 6900 XT, and with both OS's having the same settings, it's a difference between 31 FPS and 28 FPS, so around a 9% decrease. Again, not even close to 50. I'm not entirely sure why he's getting those results. If I had to speculate, it might be because he was testing it with an RX 7900 XTX, and from what I understand, RDNA 3 has another BVH instruction that RADV doesn't support, or at least the last time I checked it didn't yet support, so maybe that could be what's increasing the gap because both my cars are RDNA 2. I would be interested in testing this myself, but I don't know if I have enough money to burn on a 7000 series car, so I'm probably going to hold off on that. But the ultimate point I want to make here is that, at least with AMD, ray tracing is getting better on Linux. For a long time, it was mostly an experimental feature, but it's slowly becoming standardized, and even with these performance losses that I would argue are mostly driver related, I do believe they will improve with time. Now, I'm sure some of you guys might be thinking, okay, well, what if you run AMD VLK as your driver when running this benchmarking tool? Would you get similar, if not higher performance than Windows? Well, I wish I could answer that, but unfortunately, AMD VLK and ray tracing with DirectX games do not both well. Every time I try running a game with ray tracing, it just crashes. It does work with native Vulkan games, but if I'm using a compatibility layer to convert from DirectX to Vulkan, it just crashes. It, it just seems like AMD VLK hasn't yet come up with a stable solution for running Wine or Proton with ray tracing. So yeah, this is just one of the many reasons for why no one will ever recommend you use AMD VLK. Now, could the inferior ray tracing performance be a demotivator for switching to Linux if someone wants to game with RT? Potentially, but speaking personally, most people that I've talked to in real life don't use ray tracing. They would much rather disable it and gain more frames. And when it comes to AMD cards especially, regardless if you're on Windows or Linux, you're going to have a really bad time with ray tracing, especially with really heavy RT implementations. Like, path tracing shouldn't even be something you consider with AMD. It is an awful experience. So I feel like if you have a Radeon card, you're probably already disabling ray tracing and at that point it really just becomes a matter of which operating system is providing a better experience with raster performance. For the most part, it's still Windows due to the higher game compatibility, but some of the performance advantages with ArtV in specific games might be a little bit encouraging. At the end of the day, only time will tell, but as far as the Nvidia experience, look, if you ask me. I think you should probably directly complain to NVIDIA about this. Maybe if they are willing to open up their driver stack a little bit more, we wouldn't be in this situation. But yes, I know, they're improving in this department, they opened up their kernel modules, they invested some contributors to NVK. If you ask me, I think the only reason why NVIDIA is starting to kind of care about Linux is just because a lot of AI training models are either better or exclusively work on Linux. If it wasn't for that, I feel like they would have just continued what they've been doing for years, which is putting the absolute bare minimum support for Linux, just enough that there's an image on screen. But whatever, it is what it is. Anyway, I think that's all I have to share. Take care.